Good morning, it's the 11th of November today and welcome to the Daily Post Scriptures and Thoughts and Ideas that we hope will help you and be uplifting for you through this day. We begin with the scripture from Luke chapter 7 and verse 23. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. To read the Bible in a year today we need to keep moving on through Jeremiah and chapter 50 and Hebrews chapter 8. Thoughts of the day. The strength of a man consists in finding out the way in which God is going, and going in that way too. To be trusted is a greater compliment than to be loved. Without a problem, you will never know the true power that is inside of you. The gift that God gives us to overcome. Motivational thought for the day, it takes a person with a mission to succeed. On this day, in 1851, Elvin Clark patented a telescope on this day. And in 1918, World War One ended uh, with the signing of an armistice in a railway coach in France. In 1919, on this day, Britain introduced a two-minute silence to remember those who died in World War One. It is held at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, and. Uh, Uh, remembers the date and time at which the armistice was signed. In 1952, on this day in California, American inventors John Mullen and Wayne Johnson demonstrated the world's first video recorder. 2015, on this day, a flawless 12-carat Blue Moon Diamond sold for $48.4 million at auction in Geneva. In 2019, an Arctic blast on this day brought record low temperatures for November to the U.S. Midwest, including Kansas, Wisconsin, Michigan and Illinois. The personal story of the day, Faith is profitable unto all things. If you were to ask several people to draw a crooked line on a piece of paper, no two lines would be identical. There is a lesson in this. There are many ways to be crooked, but only one way to be straight. The Lord tells us that the righteous person has only one option, and that is to, quote, live by faith, as we're told in Habakkuk, chapter 2 and verse 4. In the chapter prior to this declaration from the Lord, the prophet Habakkuk had complained about the violence and injustice around him. It seemed as if the wicked were swallowing up the righteous. See verse 13 of chapter 1. God responded to Habakkuk by saying that his people were to be just and were to live by faith. They were not to be like the one who was proud and not upright, verse 2, verse 4 of chapter 2. A proud and self-sufficient person will rationalise his faults and imperfections. He doesn't want to admit that he needs God. His ways are crooked. Wickedness seems to prevail in our world. God urges us to live our lives in faith, taking to heart his assurance to Habakkuk that there will be a day of reckoning for the wicked. The only way to please God now and to be ready for that day of reckoning is to live by faith, to walk by faith and to serve in faith. The indwelling power of the Holy Spirit is the only thing that keeps our faith in working order. Let's work it as often as we can. Praise the Lord. Wise words. The devotional thoughts of the day, moving on again, making your free time work. Today's scripture comes from Genesis 1, 
verse 27, with references from Genesis 2, verses 19 to 23. God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. Modern American composer Charles Ives, I-V-E-S, dreamed of creating a massive open-air work of music that would reflect the grandeur of creation. He imagined two orchestras playing from neighbouring mountaintops with choirs singing counterpoint from the valley in between. He said it would be an attempt to paint the creation, the mysterious beginnings of all things. He sketched out pieces in which the sky would be represented by one group of instruments and the earth by another. The two groups would play simultaneously to illustrate the harmony of nature. Although Ives died with his universe symphony unfinished, he did inspire another composer, Johnny Reinhardt, to complete it, and it was finally performed in 1996, although in a concert hall. Human creativity is often inspired by God's creativity. Creativity is part of his image in us, and it is the first of his qualities that we see in action, and it certainly dominates the context of the above verse. Creativity is also at the core of the first specific task or responsibility that God gave to Adam. He told him to name the animals. God brought the animals to Adam to see what he would name them. See verse 19. It's instructive that Adam's first act of stewardship over creation was imaginative. How much fun he must have had in pondering the snail the ostrich, and the hippopotamus. Another purpose was to look for a suitable partner for Adam, but none could be found in the animal kingdom. So God made Eve from one of his ribs, and Adam had one more name to give. For the first time we hear what it is, woman, and learn the reason, because she was taken out of man. See verse 23. As Adam obediently exercised his linguistic creativity to name the animals and Eve, he reflected the glory of his creator. After all, God had done a lot of naming and describing during his rest, revealing the work of creation. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful Uh, work we see all around us. The second thought, we continue on again, the seven churches of the book of Revelation chapters 2 and 3, and today we visit the church of Sardis. Sardis was a commercial and industrial city at the junction of five roads. It had been the ancient capital of Lydia. But its greatest glory was in the past. In 499 BC, Sardis surrendered to Alexander the Great without a battle. In 214 BC, it was captured by Antiochus the Great. In AD 17, it was destroyed by an earthquake, but was rebuilt by Tiberius Caesar, the Roman Emperor. Like the city, the church too was in constant danger. Just as Sardis had fallen because of a lack of vigilance, so the church was in danger of falling as well. As the city had flourished and then decayed, so the church had done the same. There was an appearance of godliness but no power. Reading this letter, we get the distinct impression that there were only a few Christians left in Sardis. See verse 3. Uh, Sorry, verse 4 of chapter 3. Times were changing, and the church was being left behind. Jesus warned them to wake up and repent, lest he come as a thief and catch them unprepared. Therefore, the Lord's appeal was to the godly remnant that remained, rather than to the dead unbelievers who dominated the church roles. Sardis was a mighty church, 
which shook off Jezebel, but retained many of its former trappings. Its reform was not perfect. Ceremonies, ecclesiastical attire, candles, altars still remain a substitute for the Holy Spirit. Martin Luther started the Reformation movement in AD 1517 to break the power and domination of the Roman Catholic Church. Even though he brought freedom from the Roman Catholic Church, he did not bring spiritual revival. Many people remained dead. Martin Luther faced the organised wickedness of the time, such as the notorious sale of indulgences, which gave the purchaser a concession to sin beforehand. It was a period of immorality. If they repented, the Lord promised them white raiment, the symbol of righteousness and justice. He also promised a secure and permanent place in the book of life, as we read in 3 and verse 5. These promises were made to the church at Sardis, of course. Praise the Lord. Thoughts to uh, occupy our mind there again. Facts of the day, there are about 295 species of pigeons and doves in the world. A conveyor printing press is used to print the tiny M's on each M&M candy. Because the peanut sizes vary, the press must always be adjusted to prevent smashing the peanuts in the peanut M&M's. Regular M&M's, which are all the same size, are much easier to send through the printer. And the closing thought for the day, Lord, help me to remember that I can't always fix things. Help me to always put my trust in you. Wise thought. Thanks for joining us today. We do hope that you find the Daily Post helpful, uplifting and edifying through the day and that you'll join us again tomorrow. And in the meantime, we pray that the Lord will bless your day. Bye for now.